In Shopify, the default contact form is pretty basic. You pretty much only have name, email, phone number, and a message field. But what if you want to ask your customer a few more questions? Right? What if you need to have a custom contact form? Most people will use apps for this. There are a lot of form builder apps on the Shopify app store, and they're pretty good. They allow you to build completely custom forms. But I think in many cases, they're kind of overkill because it's actually easy enough to just copy and paste some of the form fields uh, and create your own fields when you just want to add a couple of extra questions, right? So on my website, for example, I'm asking people for uh, their store URL for their website because uh, a lot of my YouTube subscribers use my contact form. So I'd like to know their website. We can also easily enough add a drop down or a checkbox or radio buttons so that people can toggle. Um, it's not very difficult to do this stuff. So I want to teach you how to do that. And there's a few advantages to doing this instead of using an app. Okay, so firstly, you won't, you won't need to pay for an app. Secondly, it'll look nicer because it'll be part of your theme, it will still be part of your theme design. Uh, whereas apps sometimes even though they let you, you know, play with the design of the fields, they may not look as seamless when they're in your website. Um, thirdly, apps kind of slow down your site a little bit. Uh, you might notice that the page loads first and then the app uh, form loads afterwards. And yeah, in general, I just try to avoid apps in Shopify when I don't really need them. Uh, because if you use an app for every single little thing that you need in Shopify, then you'll have like 30 or 40 apps and you'll be paying $5, $10 a month for each one of them. And a lot of them will slow down your store, load a lot of extra code. So I just try to avoid apps wherever I can. And that's partly what I teach on this channel is how to get things down without the use of apps. So yeah, I'm going to split this video into like three different videos, about 10 minutes each, because I just think that's the best way to split up the subjects. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to uh, access the contact form code and how to back up that code so that you can always return it back to the default. Okay, um, next, I'm going to show you how to remove a field and how to change the placeholder text of the fields. So like where it says name and email and all of that, you can change it to say something else. You can also change the, the send button, you can change the thank you message that people see after they send the form. So that's going to be part one, a nice slow introduction. That's going to be this video. Uh, then part two, the next video is going to be how to actually add custom fields. So I will probably show you how to add a, a simple text field. I might also show you how to add a large text area, then maybe a drop down, uh, maybe a checkbox, something like that. And then in part three, I'll show you how to add completely different forms uh, on different pages of your Shopify store, and it's still being the built in Shopify form. Uh, but with completely different questions. So you might have a general contact form. And then you might have a contact form for your custom made to order products like an order form, right? Um, or you might have an application form if you're a wholesaler, you might have a wholesale application form, right? Or a survey or anything else. Okay, so that's going to be part three of this small series. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon because YouTube won't always show you my new videos. So if you hit the bell icon, you'll make sure that you don't miss that video. And yeah, with that said, let's begin. Okay, firstly, let's talk about creating a contact page. This is pretty simple. And you might know this already. But there are a couple of important notes that I want you to keep in mind. To create a page like this, you simply add a page and then you select the contact template. The name of the page doesn't matter. This template is what matters. Okay. There is only one contact template. So there's only one form. So if you make any changes to this form, which I'm going to be showing you in this video, then those changes will remain even if you create another page and select this contact template again. Okay, it's not going to be a new fresh copy of the contact form. There's only one contact form and it's the one that we're going to edit now. For this reason, and because we're going to be editing code, it's easy to maybe mess something up. So I think that you should do a backup of your contact form template just before we get started if you're going to follow along. And actually, if you're going to edit code, it's always good to do a backup anyway. So to do this, we're just going to go into actions, edit code, 
from the theme page. And we're going to search for a file called contact form dot liquid. Okay, that's mainly what we're going to be changing today. Let's just select everything here. I'm pressing Control A or Command A, copy, and then we're going to add a new section and call it contact form backup dot liquid. Okay, create that section, replace this. Okay, so paste everything in replacing that or you can delete it and then paste and save. Okay, so now if you mess anything up, you can just grab all of this paste it back into the main contact form liquid template and you'll be back to normal. Now that we have our contact page set up, there's a few changes that I want to make right away. Firstly, I don't like this phone number field, I really don't need it. Then I want to change the word comment to something like casual, just like what's up. And then when the contact form is actually sent, there's a thank you message that comes up that says thanks for contacting us. Uh, this is a bit impersonal, I would rather say something like thanks for getting in touch. So I'm going to change that as well. So let's do that. Now, the first thing is the phone number. I'm going to go back into the code editor. So once again, you go through themes, and then you go to actions and edit code. When you're in here, you're going to look for the contact form template again. Hopefully you already made a backup. And here we're going to scroll down or we're going to search using Control F or Command F for the word phone, so that we can see the field, right? So we can find the div class of field that is wrapping this phone input, you should pay attention to the HTML structure of this form template, all of our fields, for example, this text area here, this is the big comment field, all of our fields are wrapped inside of this div class field, you see that? Um, if you're new to HTML, this is an opening div tag. And this is a closing div tag, which has this slash at the end. So this is the actual field. And that's the part that we want to remove. Now you could just delete this. But I actually recommend commenting it out. So um, in programming, when programmers want to add a comment, maybe for another programmer, or for themselves in future, they write it like this. So what this does is basically, it tells the computer, or, you know, the server, whatever's reading this code, to ignore what's between these comment tags. So this, this won't be output on your website, it will be completely ignored by the computer. What ended up happening is that this became a very useful way to actually hide something as well to hide some code without completely deleting it. And so it's easy to bring it back at any time. Now that I've put this end comment tag, after this block of code, this entire block is going to be completely ignored, we can hit save, and we can see that the phone number field has disappeared. Now if I ever want to bring the phone number field back, I can just delete these comment tags, and it'll be back. The next thing that I wanted to show you was how to change the words that are used inside of these fields. So I want to change the word comment to something more casual, like what's up. And then I also want to change the wording of the thank you message. Now we can do this in code. Okay, we can find uh, where those words are, and then we can change them in code. But I actually don't recommend doing that because there is a much easier way and a much less destructive way right, so we don't need to mess with the code. And the way that I recommend is by editing the language file. So the language file is something that you would usually use if your store is in another language, and you want to translate all of the button text. But even if your store is in English, but you just want to use different words for certain things, then you can use the language file as well. So as you just saw, you just go into actions and edit languages. And then here, you can search for things like, for example, comment, I can search for the word comment. And if I scroll down, I'll see contact form comment. But instead of searching, I actually recommend going to this uh, part of the languages file templates. And then you will be able to see all the fields relating to the contact form. So here we have templates. 
I'll click on that and then we'll scroll down and we can see contact form. And this is all the text relating to the contact form. So instead of comment, I'm going to write what's up. Let's hit save. And when I refresh, this is going to say what's up. Great. Now for the thank you message. Here it is, it's called post success. Um, and thank you for contacting us. I'm going to write thanks for getting in touch. Hit save. And now you can test your contact form, just submit something if you want to see that thank you message. Uh, but you can also do something like this. So this part of the URL will actually show the thank you message because that's what happens when you hit send. This gets added. Uh, so if you want, you can actually just type that out at the end of your URL here, you type question mark, contact underscore posted equals true hashtag contact form. Okay, and that will show your thank you message without actually sending the form. But yeah, basically, you can see that my text has changed. That is all for this part of the tutorial. In the next part, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own fields, like this website field that I've added. Since you're watching this in the future, I've probably already made that part of the tutorial. So you will find the link in the description in the comments and at the end of this video. So you can go and watch that right now.